Welcome everyone, this is The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. It is Scrawlerbox time. Scrawlerbox are a UK based art supply company and you send them a little bit of money and in return they send you a box of goodies every month for your arting pleasure. Regular items that are featured in the box include a featured artist and they usually showcase a piece of art that uses the supplies that come in the box. In addition to that, you always have a scroller box sticker, some sort of suite and a list of all the items that come in the box. On that list of items, there is usually a prompt, which is called the scroller challenge. And the idea is you create a piece of artwork using the supplies that come in the box. They usually give you some sort of surface to draw on as well, which is really handy. So we're gonna get going and go to top down so that we can open this bad boy up and see what's inside. That sounds suspiciously like a pencil noise. This is good. Okay, confession, I started going through the box and thought I was filming and I wasn't. Thankfully, I didn't get too far through. So all I've done is bust the tape and I have found the featured artist, which I am super excited about. This is uh, Emily Jarridge and she is known online as Sakuems. And I'm sure for those of you who follow some of the bigger YouTubers, you already know who she is because you either follow her already or you will have heard other YouTubers mention her. Her artwork is lovely. I just absolutely adore Dora is so nice and it's usually quite colourful as well and she has quite a nice illustrative style so not only has she given you her um, her artwork but she's also given us line art as well so that you can colour it in yourself and try it out which I just think is absolutely adorable. Her um, social media details are down at the bottom on the back of her artwork. The next thing that's in the box is this rather funky coloured sketchbook and uh, it feels like quite good quality paper. I'm interested to know if these are being doled out in different colours so once you guys get your scroller box let me know if you've got the same colour or whether the, you have been something different. That would be good to know. Okay so in here we have our, oh, oh, oh. We have our list of supplies in our scroller prompt which I'll leave till the end and we have our scroller box sticker which has been done to look as if it's been coloured with coloured pencil which is kind of cute. There must be a sweet in here somewhere. Okay, a uh, boiled sweet. It could be any flavour, who knows. I'll find out once I'm finished filming. Alrighty, so the first thing we have, what is this? We have a Pilot V-Ball pen and it says pure liquid ink and it is a 0 0.7 nib. So let's have a quick look at that and see what it's like. It looks like a kind of standard pen to me. I find it very difficult to get excited about these black pens anymore because I have oodles of them in nearly every shape and form. But still, for the purposes of our scroller challenge, that's going to be handy. What else have we got? Oh, what is this? Oh, wow, that is a chunky monkey of a pencil. Why? All it says is YPO on it. There's no other writing on it. It is a triangular barrel and that is one chunky bit of... I'm really hoping that's graphite anyway. Looks like graphite. I like the fact that it's yellow as well, it's quite cheery. All right, what else is in here? Oh well, there's quite a lot of pencils. A Kohenur Progresso white. That's heavy, it, it, maybe it's charcoal. I don't really know, but there's no, there's nothing, you know, like there's no core to it. Whatever that is, is what this is. Oh, this is interesting. I haven't seen this before, but it does feel heavy. Right, we'll check that out soon as well. So we have some sort of white pencil. Oh, my mortal enemy, a Derwent burnisher. I don't really use burnisher and blender pencils a huge amount, so I'm gonna have to make a conscious effort to use this. Basically, a burnisher is a pencil that has no pigment in it, and what it lets you do is it lets you go over your colored pencil and smooth out and flatten the tooth of the paper, and it usually gives you a really sort of flat, polished finish um, to your, your coloured pencil. It obliterates all texture basically and that's why I don't like it because I am an artist who likes texture. But we'll make sure that we use it. Ooh, Statler Super Soft Coloured Pencils made in Germany. Work on black and white paper apparently, it says down here. Um, yeah, and it's, it's kind of like touting that on the back as well. I think we'll be the judge of that. So let's have a little look at these. These look suspiciously like posh Norris colour pencils. Oh, the barrels are kind of fancy. Let's have a little look. So the colour is on the end of the pencil, which is absolutely no use to man nor beast. Let me just have a look. 
and they have they do have numbers on them here i'm assuming that that will correspond to the color of the pencil other than that there's nothing to distinguish you know each pencil from the other unless you tip them up and use them on their end however if you're going to keep them in the box you can see there you know it's really easy to pick out what you want and there seems to be there is a skin tone a pale skin tone in there but apart from that it's just sort of basic colors which is okay the usual suspects a light and a dark blue a light and a dark green a pink don't really have a purple in there unless they're calling that purple all right that's interesting i do like pencils um so we shall give those a bash is there anything else in here oh oh we have a sharpener we have a a two hole sharpener um an m and r sharpener these are really good quality blades that are on these and i'm assuming that they'll do a pretty good job of sharpening those pencils and oh we also have a derwent blender pencil oh joy so i don't really know what the difference between these is supposed to be the derwent blender i assume will let you move the pigment about so that you can blend colors together where does the burnisher may not do that but i know a lot of people use a uh, like a colorless blender to do the same job as a burnisher so i think we better have a look at the uh the I was going to say the ingredients list, and we're not making a cake. I need to have a look at the supplies list and see what it says about them. Yeah, right, that is us. Cool. Uh, super soft color pencils. This is a new art range, so maybe this is replacing the the Norris color or the Ergo Softs. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Super soft color leads. Okay, so we're expecting lay down to be quite rich with this if they're soft and work effectively on black and white paper. Uh, blender and burnisher pencils. The blender pencil is a soft colorless pencil that allows you to blend two or more colors together. Well, that makes sense. It mixes and smooths colors, so individual strokes and hard, ed hard edges are softened. The burnisher is a hard colorless pencil, which when used over layers of pigment provides a rich polish finish. Isn't that pretty much what I said? Mobius and Rupert double hole sharpener, wedge shaped magnesium pencil sharpener, one hole for graphite pencils, which is supposedly the little hole, and one for coloured pencils, which is the big hole. A premium artist quality sharpener with replaceable M&R quality blades. Didn't I say? Quality, yes. Right, so that's good. We're good so far. The Progresso woodless pencil. Lacquer coated pencils don't have traditional wood casing, giving you a pure stick of colour. So it's basically a white coloured pencil. And I think they've given us that because there isn't one that comes in this pack. Uh, it has five times more coverage potential than a normal coloured pencil and can be sharpened in any standard sharpener. The solid lead gives each pencil added heft, with each pencil weighing in at 12 grams. Yeah, I did say that. Well, I'm throwing it about. I did say it does feel quite heavy. YPO Jumbo Graphite Pencil. I love this. Not a standard pencil by any means, but maybe the size and shape will give you more control over your sketches. I'm more concerned about sharpening this bad boy. I think I'm going to have to sharpen that with a knife, if I'm perfectly honest. Mm. West Design Sketchbook. A pearlescent purple colour, so that's answered my question. Everyone's going to get the same thing because it's actually written in the in the description here. 140 gram pages, so that's quite quite good quality paper, quite heavy. Perfect place to create your very own colouring book. Well, I don't know about that. We'll see about that. It says here recommended retail price £1.59. That is really cheap for that. That is super cheap. There's quite a lot of pages in that as well. Ha. Okay, scroller challenge. Prompt is Enchantress. Oh, now that's an interesting one. I like it. Now let's get to the important part. We need to test everything out. All right, first things first. I, uh, I'm always very suspicious of things that claim to be super duper. And this uh, this pencil is one of them. I'm not a huge fan of Koinur products. I'm the first person to admit that. However, I will go in with an open mind. It feels really smooth going down, but I wouldn't say that that's any better or any worse than other white pencils. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you this against a couple of other white pencils that I have. I think that would be a good gauge of how good this really is. I don't want to start turning this into like a pencil comparison video, but just as I am a pencil person, I think this is worth doing. So that is Crayola. I also have a rather pathetic looking, <laughs> oh, rather pathetic looking prisma color i 
I have a polychromos. I'll just put poly for short. Poly put the kettle on. Lastly, I have the Rolls Royce of coloured pencils. This is a Caran Dash Luminance. I'll call it Lum for short. That'll be really funny to anybody else that's Scottish and watching this. They know what a Lum is. Or anyone who plays Rayman for that matter, but that's a different story altogether. Okay, so there's your four pencils in sort of budget order. So let's try the corner underneath and just see what happens. And I'll just call this Noor. Eh. What do you think, everyone? I would say it's probably somewhere in between the poly and the Prisma colour. It's definitely not as white as the Luminance pencil. That's to be expected though. Um, the, these pencils are so expensive. It's actually not bad at all. It feels softer going down than the Polychromos, but not as soft as the Prisma colour. So I think it's somewhere in between those two. But I may actually use that because I do like to work on black paper, as some of you know. I've got a bit of a fixation with drawing on black paper. Okay, that's, that's a win. So we'll pop that back in the box and we'll move on to the next thing. Let's get out some, in fact, no, let's try the, the Pilot pen. The ink flow is good. It actually feels quite loose, um, quite, quite free flowing. I think for someone that draws quickly, this would be an ideal pen. Uh, the, the ink is very, very loose and the roller ball feels as if it's going quite Quite freely there. You see there's no skipping or anything and I'm moving the pen really quickly across that paper. Beep, 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 beep. So that's that's a pretty good pen we're happy with that as well. Moving on and we've got our chunky monkey pencil which I'm gonna have to figure out how to sharpen. Now did this say it was an HB? I can't remember. It just says jumbo graphite but I'm assuming it's HB. Oh that is horrible. That is actually horrible. It's really scratchy. Ah, oh, no, I don't like this at all. I really, really don't like it. I think you can still get lots of different values, you know, like shades with it. Um, I don't see there being any problem. I just, it doesn't feel nice in the hand. I don't like the triangular shape and it feels very hollow and cheap. You know, it's, it's kind of like one of those novelty pencils that you'd buy for your kid's Christmas stocking or something. Yeah, not really a fan of that. And I like pencils. That's a shame. All right, let's get some colored pencil on the go. Ooh. Let's see how soft these really are, because that's their claim. Oh, they are quite soft. The color distribution's quite good. They're reasonably vibrant. I think this is a case of some of them will be more vibrant than others. I mean, there's definitely, definitely nothing wrong with these pencils. I'd be happy to colour anything with them. So I just want to give you a, a blender and burnisher demonstration here with these, these three colours. So with the blender pencil, normally, normally you would work light to dark because if you start in the darkest part, you risk dragging the colour through into the lighter areas, which is what you don't want. And what you want to do is you want to press down and work in circular motions. Now you can see there, that tiny little part that I've done, it's actually smoothed it out, which is what a burnisher does as well. But we should be able to manipulate these colours together and start to sort of blend them into each other. And it's doing an okay job of that. You've just, it's one of these ones you've just got to keep working at it though. When you want to switch to other colours, you need to make sure that you get the excess pigment off the tip. And usually just by dragging it across the paper in a circular motion, you can do that until it's got rid of everything. Um, Cause you don't want to pick up that colour and end up putting it into something else. Okay, so I deliberately used very separate sections of colour there, um, just to demonstrate in a sort of extreme sense how this would work. So you can see that especially here it's blended a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same using another set of colors, but I'm gonna overlap them slightly and then do it and let you see how well it, that these things can work. I'm quite impressed with the pigment in these. Oh, that's nice. 
So normally you would just start to let up pressure where you want the colours to blend in together. If we start with a heavy hand at this side and just overlap that into this one. They actually blend quite well together anyway, that's, that's pretty good going. So let's just make this a bit more professional looking once I've cleaned off my, my blender. Okay, so let's see where we go with this. So again, I'm just using circular motions. I'm pressing reasonably hard, not, you know, absolutely death grip hard, but this should all start to blend out pretty well. And all it does is give you a much smoother transition from one colour to another. <sighs> like that. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that there, the line's much less defined in that compared to over there. But it's still done quite a good job of, of smish, smishing, smishing these colours together, so that's not bad at all. The other thing that I want to show you is the burnisher, so let's pick another colour. I don't know whether this is purple or pink, but we're about to find out. Oh, I would say that's a sort of fuchsia colour, isn't it? It's neither one thing nor the other. I hate that. Okay, so if I go like this again, you can see, quite clearly see the texture of the paper through the pencil so the idea with the burnisher is that it's going to smooth that all out and it's going to leave a really sort of nice polished finish so again you want to press down reasonably hard and work in circular motions and I'm only going to do half of this just so that you can see the comparison to the other half of the paper it is not advisable to burnish on low quality paper because there is a risk that you will start to pill the paper or worse put a hole in it it has been known you can see the difference there quite clearly between the burnished area and the not so burnished area. So if you are a fan of nice smooth artwork or you're looking for a more sort of um, cartoon or illustrative effect, these are really good if you're working with coloured pencil. There we go, and that is how it is done. Okay, let's see what colours we've got left to test. There's this sort of peachy colour. It's quite orangey, isn't it? Mm. And we have, we already used the red, not bad. Oh no, that's supposed to be pink. Oh right, okay. See, this is a problem. Let's see this next to the red. Okay, it looks quite pink next to the red, but there's not a lot in that. Nope, so we have a pale green. We have a darker green. Those are quite nice, I like them. Yeah, the colours are quite vibrant. I quite like these pencils. And we have a kind of dark brown there. It's like a, a Van Dyke brown, maybe? I don't know. I'm not up on my browns. And a black. All right, that's pretty nice. So the other thing we want to do now, uh, the, the box does boast that they work well on black paper. I would imagine that it would be the brighter colours that would work on black paper. So let's just see how we go. Oh, that's quite good. Yellow. All oh, right, yeah, that's quite good. They're not completely opaque, but you wouldn't expect pencil to be, well, I wouldn't expect pencil to be, but that, that shows up quite well on this black paper. Yeah, they're okay. I would imagine as well that these are going to be touted as a, a reasonably... Oh, the dark green's not very good at all. Okay, you'd maybe not use that one. And the brown you're not going to see much either. Nah. So that just leaves the other blue, the dark blue. Uh, yeah, the dark, nah, the dark blue is not too bad. It's not great. I'm um, just going to have a look at the price range for these pencils. Yeah, these are these are reasonably cheap pencils. The recommended retail price is seven ninety nine for the set of twelve, and that is in British pounds. Um, what I find with these recommended retail prices, they're in teeny tiny writing in the corner. They're not usually very accurate. A quick internet search, and I'm not talking about delving into the you know the depths of the of the sort of marketplace but a quick search usually pulls up items like that cheaper than the recommended retail price so i would say that these are a relatively budget friendly pencil and i'm i'm quite impressed with them i quite like them and the fact that you've got this added bonus of being able to use them on black paper is definitely definitely a good thing 
Okay, the last thing I've got to try here is this sharpener and I was just wanting to find a blunt pencil to test this out. So I have, it's not actually all that blunt, but it'll do for now. Um, I'm just gonna do it straight onto here. This is supposed to be the graphite side. Now remember kids, when you're sharpening, you're supposed to turn the sharpener and not the, oh well, that went well. You're supposed to turn the sharpener and not the pencil. I'm actually quite lazy. I kind of, I do it in half turns. I don't turn the sharpener all the way around because that's awkward and it takes ages. Oh, this feels really tight and it actually feels like really hard work. That's just destroying the lead in this pencil. This pencil is new out of the box. It hasn't been used. So I highly doubt that the issue here is the pencil, but we'll keep trying. If it, if it doesn't sharpen this time, I'm gonna try another graphite pencil. Oh, that's pretty good, it must have heard me. <laughs> yeah, and that is, that is a pointy point by anyone's standards. Yep, okay, that's got my seal of approval. I just made a mess everywhere. And the colored pencil one, let me see, I've got a colored pencil here as well. I've got Prismacolor, which are renowned for being terrible for sharpening because they are so soft. So let's just, see what I mean? I, I tend to twist the sharpener, but I only half twist it. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good as well. That's a, that is a pointy point. Okay, so our sharpeners got the thumbs up from me as well. That might actually be, because it's a dual hole sharpener, that might be the kind of sharpener that I would put in my drawing pencil case to carry about with me. Um, I tend to use more traditional sharpeners with my drawing pencils. All right, so let's have a quick recap. So this month's scrawler box has featured artist Saku M's. Not only to get a piece of her artwork, but she's also generously given us the line art for that as well. This beautiful sketchbook in this sort of spangly lilac color a set of 12 Statler super soft colour pencils which are surprisingly nice and do work on black paper for the most part. We have our odd triangular shaped pencil that I don't really like but it will do for the, the purposes of the scroller challenge. We have the Derwent burnisher and the Derwent blender pencils to help us squish together and smooth out our artwork. We have the Pilot V-Ball pen and we have the Koenor Progresso white woodless pencil as well. In addition, not forgetting our two hole sharpener, which is pretty good as well. Scroller box sticker, list of supplies, including the scroller challenge prompt and one as yet unidentified sweet. That is your scroller box for March. I hope you have enjoyed having a quick look through it with me, guys. Keep your eyes peeled for my video on the scroller challenge, which will be in my normal video schedule in about a week or so's time. Thanks for joining me. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Let more people find us and see the videos. And I hope you all have a good day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.